Super Doomspire has some very strong and brute weapons. What do you think of when you think brute force? Do you think the typical definition of strong? A big, huge weapon? Not always. Strong weapons can come in different sizes and different shapes. A typical strong weapon in Super Doomspire may include weapons such as the Shadow Blade, which is a weapon of skilled users, or you can go to a brute scale such as the Greatsword and more. Not in terms of damage per second, but in terms of damage per swing. These are the best weapons to choose. Different players have different playing styles, which may make certain weapons strong for them, but very weak for others. See, there is no strongest weapon in Super Doomspire, which is why I make this series to help people figure out weapons of their choice. 17 episodes, it's crazy and just keeps on growing. Anyways, back on topic. You clicked on this video because you like brute weapons, right? AKA very heavy weapons? Okay, good. So let's swing right into it. Don't get my pun on, darn. My name's Dookie Alex, and this is our Player's Guide series, Super Doomspire, where we teach you how to get the best scores in games. Yo, what's up, Ash Nerd Squad, and welcome back to another video. Before we get started in this video, make sure to subscribe for Xbox Box Drama, news, tips and tricks, and more. We upload weekly to twice a week. Thank you so much for 6k subscribers huge golden mirror inching closer and closer to 10k every single day make sure to subscribe to help us get to 7k we are very accepting the nerd squad and become a channel member if you'd like to support us further in today's video we'll be doing a brood loadout for super doomspire that i recommend for it a typical loadout goes like this launcher sword bomb super ball and lastly our trowel Here's the thing about our trial though, it very much works like a tool, not a weapon in most regards. So we may be talking about this weapon, or more as a tool differently than the others. Let's start off with our launcher. Launchers are one of the 5 tools that a player will always have on them, most varying in style and ability. Launchers are often intended and used for knocking down towers, destroying buildings. They, as their name implies, launch an explosive rocket which can also cause devastating damage to little clusters of unaware players, catch others off guard and potentially counter players with weapons that swing slower, and if somebody wishes to do so, it can also be used for rocket jumping. Firstly, let's start off with this launcher. Now, in this launcher in our brute loadout, which I will call Brute Battler, I chose a launcher that is generally regarded as the most powerful launcher in game in terms of strength. Our weapon of choice, of course, is the scope shot. So the hefty amount of damage is one of the best rockets to take of other players. The scope shot has many things that make it a brute weapon. It acts like a sniper in a sense. Some of these abilities include the ability to have a very long range, its ability to have a heavier rocket that can knock out players in one hit, and much, much more. This weapon excels in rounds like Roncat Rally because of its ability to travel far and knock out buildings very fast. Although I wouldn't recommend this one for destroying towers, it is rocket speed is one of the fastest out there. It is fast and because it is fast, it can combat a lot of the properties of being slow for a brute weapon, such as reload time, which can easily combat it for this. For brute weapon, it is very fast, hence why I chose this weapon. However, a lot of people make the mistake of buying the kitty launcher thinking it's better. It's a reskin, so please don't make this mistake. Just because the rear skin is legendary does not make it better. It just goes meow, unless you call cat noises better, I guess, which I mean is cool. Continuing forward, the scope shot is one of the best weapons in game for three reasons. It's fast, good speed, it's brute strength, which can make it a qualifier for this weapon with, and it's damage, which can go up to 220, which is absolutely amazing. Let's go over the buffs and nerfs. Buffs, 80% more damage. This damage is absolutely huge, almost double the size, and can make a great deal in combat, especially for kills. 80% more rocket speed. This speed combats the slowness of being reloaded because the rocket speed is so fast, which can make it useful for rounds like Round Cat Rally. And it can also make it useful for other rounds like Infection to catch those fast zombies. Art's nerfs are 30% less splash radius. This isn't really that big of a deal because it is a sniper type weapon after all. Therefore, I picked Scope Shot because of its ability to be a brute sniper type weapon. Next, let's go over our swords. Swords are tools primarily used for close combat and mobility. All swords have mid-air attacks. Mid-air attacks are attacks when you're resting the left mouse and airborne with your sword. Air attacks will make you gain height, assisting movement in the air just like bomb jumping over long distances or just travel in general. Now, our next weapon is going to be focused on a mid-air attack as a striking move. This striking move is some of the best in game. The next weapon we will be focusing on for a sword is our great sword. The great sword is a very rare, primarily melee based sword that focuses on dealing damage rather than mobility. It costs 2000 crowns. When used, it sports the longest range out of all the other swords at 7 studs. It also has a 60% more damage swing at cost of 
minus 100% swing speed, and a negative 25% speed penalty when held. However, the special move can easily negate the penalties in combat. Due to these stats, it is best not to engage in melee combat against a greatsword user. However, what the greatsword gains in combat, it lacks mobility. Due to the slower walk speed and swing speed, it takes longer than normal to go from place to place with the sword alone and requires a bomb to get from spire to spire. It is also easier to hit a greatsword user with ranged weapons, so just be careful. When using it, it's great for hordes. Its special attack is the Great Spin, which deals heavy knockback and 60 damage to any enemy caught in the spin. It can also be utilized to gain momentum or remove all attention. Take down especially an infection, which is what makes this weapon so good. This weapon's penalties, as mentioned previously, can be easily negated because you can just unequip the sword if you don't want the walk speed nerf. A 60% more damage per swing causes it to be the highest damage sword in the game per swing. Buffs 60% more damage in range. This damage in range can help especially with hordes and infection. For hordes, this is the most effective weapon you can take because of its ability to be great in combat being a heavier weapon. 25% less ragtime time resistance. This means that if you are hit, your time will be less and your ability to stand your ground will it's more, meaning you are more sturdy as a result of carrying this weapon. If you are about to be hit by a super ball and you can't dodge it, immediately equip this weapon. Nerfs 100% slower swing speed. This swing speed can be easily combated by only equipping the sword when you need it. This will make the walk speed nerf, which will be mentioned 20%, a lot easier to combat and essentially defunct. 20% slower walk speed. Therefore, equip the greatsword because of its ability to have the best swing per damage, its ability to combat hordes, and also its ability of great swing, which is great swing is one of the most powerful pack a punch moves in game. Next, let's go over our bomb. Bombs are a tool in game used for bomb jumping and destroying players up close. Although they can't kill players, it is hard to flow off as they need to be close to the bomb. Some bombs are allowed, some mostly stay put, and some stick to buildings. For a bomb, we normally always choose the same bomb, but for this one, we're actually going to pick another one. The bomb we normally choose is remote, but if we want a sturdy bomb, we are going to want to choose. The square bomb is a common bomb that can be purchased for 150 crowns. The square bomb is now a cube state instead of the usual orb, and this orb will not roll around anymore when placed normally. To compensate, it will take 5% longer for the bomb to explode than a normal bomb. Being a bomb, pressing R or right click when shift lock will place down the bomb, making it stick to the floor under the player and will increase the bomb jumping power, but will reduce the denomination radius. Buffs, it doesn't roll around, nerfs, it's 5% longer denomination time. Therefore, I chose this bomb because of its ability to be sturdy and stand ground, which can make it very useful for destruction where it'll stay in one place. Plus, its cheapness is very good for starting players, which can make it a bomb with a tiny buff, which can help in combat a lot more than you think. Lastly, our trowel. Trowels are tools in game that make buildings. The buildings are mainly used for defense, but can be used for offense or positioning at times. Bricks are required to use and build with trowels. Not having the required minimum brick will not allow the trowel to be used until they meet the brick cost and still trigger the cooldown. The ball turret is an awesome trowel that can be bought for 5,000 coins. The ball turret will, when placed on a turret, if the turret will be in standby until the enemy is spotted, then the ball turret will start targeting the enemy player. When taking sight of an enemy, the front and back will start glowing, then it will start flying, glowing super balls at them. On impact, the ball will deal 20 damage to the target and will stagger the opponent for a brief moment. The ball turret has 30% health, and you can only place two turrets before future placements will destroy the oldest ball turret. After playing it's a turret, you'll have to wait 6 seconds until you can place another. The ball turret is amazing for infections since it can easily hit and kill infected, especially if placed in some particular places. Therefore, this weapon can be classified as brute because of its ability to be placed and it's good for its offensive traits. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a like if you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next video.